Welcome to Credo. This video will walk you through the process of adding API keys to your policies for programmatically approving or rejecting transactions. There are two options, using the signing agent or the Credo API directly. Detailed descriptions of both methods are available in the developer docs. In this tutorial, we'll focus on the signing agent method. The signing agent, an open source service developed by Credo, streamlines the addition of programmatic members to your policies. It monitors approval requests via WebSockets and enables automated custody. An approval from a signing agent is equivalent to one from a human member. To follow this tutorial, ensure your workspace is set up with an initial API key that has read-write access and that you have an authentication token. We'll be running the signing agent on a fresh AWS Linux server. Start by installing Docker on your server if it's not installed already. Once installed, launch Docker and set it to run on startup. Confirm that Docker is properly installed and operational. Next, install Git. Clone the signing agent repository into a new directory named signing agent. Switch to this directory and build the Docker image using the signing agent repository. After building, verify the creation of a new Docker image named signing agent. Now, create a volume directory, ensuring you have read and write permissions. This directory will serve as persistent data storage for Docker. Move into the volume directory. Copy the config template YAML file from the signing agent directory to the volume directory, renaming it to config.yaml. Let's take a closer look at the configuration file. Auto approval is currently set to true for conducting basic governance tests. However, for production environments, it's advisable to set this to false. In production settings, it's crucial to set TLS enabled to true to ensure traffic encryption and secure data transfer. For testing purposes, we're using the default text file ccstore.db to store the private BLS key. But for production, we strongly recommend integrating with a key management service. If using AWS as an integration, initialize a secret in the desired region and input the secret name, changing the file type to AWS. For detailed guidelines, please consult our best practices guide. Let's now continue with the signing agent setup. First, ensure you're in the signing agent directory. Next, initiate the signing agent image. Pay close attention to the command line messages to confirm that the signing agent isn't auto-approving transactions yet. Now it's time to register the signing agent instance, incorporating WebSocket and API parameters. Let the signing agent continue running in the background. We advise assigning a unique API key to each signing agent instance. Let's create a new API key and secret specifically for our signing agent instance. Use the Create API Key endpoint for this. Make sure to include your workspace ID in the query. In the request body, name the API key and assign it the approver role. For our purposes, we're also granting it workspace admin and trader roles to facilitate setting up a new policy and a new Web3 wallet. Don't forget to add the X token header with your auth token. After submission, be sure to record the new API key and API secret. Next, let's register the signing agent instance. Keep the signing agent instance active. In a separate window, prepare your registration command with your new API key, secret, and workspace ID. After submitting your registration, the signing agent feed will display a confirmation message indicating that the client is successfully registered. Next, we'll set up a new policy and include our signing agent in it. To create a new transaction policy, you first need the admin policy ID of your workspace. Retrieve this by calling the list policies endpoint and noting the admin policy ID. Now, proceed to use the create policy endpoint. In this case, we're establishing a transaction policy with two members, our signing agent API key and one human approver. We'll set the approval threshold to one, meaning just one of these members needs to approve actions. Remember to include the X token header with your auth token. 
Upon submission, you'll receive a response containing the new policy ID. Record this policy ID. We will then proceed to create a new Web3 wallet governed by this newly established policy. Use the Create a Wallet in Portfolio endpoint for the next step. Ensure you include your workspace ID and portfolio ID in the query. Refer to the developer docs for an example of the request body. In the body of your request, include the policy ID you just created. Take note of the wallet address you receive in the response. In the background, we've funded the new wallet with Sepolia ETH, enabling us to initiate an EVM transaction from this wallet, now under the control of the signing agent. Following the steps outlined in our previous tutorial, we'll use the Create an EVM-based EIP-1559 transaction endpoint. In the request body, we'll designate our newly created wallet as the from address. After submission, the signing agent feed will show that the transaction has been received and approved. Next, let's verify the transaction status by using the Get an EVM-based transaction by ID endpoint. We can use the returned hash to check the status on the Sepolia Block Explorer. Congratulations! You've successfully navigated through setting up your signing agent, integrating an API key into your policies, and automatically approving a transaction.